Here's another example that's a little bit more in depth. So in this case, what we have is a kind of sub case of Buffy the Vampire television show. Here, I want to cite one episode, one 60 minute show from this whole series. And this series went on for a long time, 1997 to 2003, so a number of years. I want to cite just one. So how do we do that? Well, we begin here with the name Hush. Hush is inside of these quotation marks. What does that tell us? That tells us that this is something smaller that's part of something bigger. It's inside a container. And this name here is the name of the episode, Hush. We have a period at the end. What is it inside? It's inside the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And that is italicized. That is the whole name of the show. Comma. Created by Joss Whedon, performance by Sarah Michelle Geller, which is similar to the information we looked at earlier. And then we give more detail. So where is this? What's the volume number? What's the issue number? Well, television shows don't have volume and issue numbers. What do they have? They have season numbers. So in this case, it's season four, episode 10. Pay attention to those Capitalization, because remember, volume was not capitalized, number was not capitalized, so season episode is not capitalized, Mutant Enemy is the production company that is capitalized, and the year of that episode. We do not have 97 to 2003 because this was one episode inside of one year. How about another example? This example would be uh, a song. So this is a a song on a CD or online or downloaded from say iTunes or something like that. How do we write that? In this case we write the person who's responsible for the song. That could be the writer, that could be the singer. And in this case Beyonce, Beyonce, not her name, Beyonce, period. Pretty Hurts. Pretty Hurts is what? It's inside quotation marks that tells us something. It's a smaller part of something bigger. In this case, it's one song on the CD, or on what we call the album. One song on the whole album. The album is made up of many songs. Or, we don't have albums anymore, they're still called albums, but they're actually CDs. Or they're downloadable, right? This is one song, part of something bigger. What is that album, or what is that CD's name? It's actually called Beyonce. So that's the actual name of the whole album. And who are the publishers? Parkwood Entertainment, and what is the year of release? 2013. Now usually we're finished here, aren't we? Usually this is game over, we're done. But here we have something more. What is this more? This is more information to help the user find exactly what you cited. In this case, it's a website address, and it has the exact location of that album. So the person can hunt it down and find it. That's the key point. What about websites? We've kind of touched a little bit on it here and there, but now let's get more specific. So here we have the last name first and first name last. So Homitel, Hol Stephanie, period. So many books, 2003 to 2013, and here's a website address. Okay, what do we have here? Let's break this down. This is obviously the author. This is the person who wrote something. What's the title of what they wrote? Well, so many books. Now, is this inside parentheses? No, it's not. It's not inside parentheses, which tells us something, doesn't it? It is italicized, which is the same as underlined, which means it's a larger thing. It's the container. It's the whole thing rather than one piece. What is this whole thing? So many books. What is that? Well, that looks like the name of a blog on a website. So there's a website, and that site is called 
so many books. That's the whole site. And this site could have hundreds or thousands of posts. And those posts are small pieces. In this case, we're not citing one piece. We're citing the whole thing. We're doing some research and we're saying, hey, that's interesting. Look at that. And when was that site being posted to? 2003 to 2013? And what is the site's address? Here we cite the address. Now look, we do not have the HTTP uh, colon slash slash. We don't do that. We just have the address by itself, independent. What if somebody sends you an email and you want to use that in your research? Well, you can do that also. We begin with the very basic one, right? The author. Who sent you the email? Who's the author? And in this case, very simple. Use the name and what do we do? Remember, last name first, first name last. So in this case, Boyle, last name Anthony, and middle name is T, and then we have a period. Now then, we have a quotation mark. What does quotation mark tell us? Remember, quotation mark is telling us this is a piece of something bigger. This is this piece. This is one email. So this email, how do we give it a name? Well, we use the subject line. So the subject line of this email, whoops, back here. The subject name of this email was RE Utopia. And then we specify, received by Daniel J. Cahill. So this is the person who received it. If this is me and I received it, then this would be my name, comma. When did you receive it? 21 June. So it's the day, and the month, and the year. And there's no commas in there at all. So we're beginning to get this idea of when something is uh, smaller, when something is bigger, when it's inside of something bigger, inside of a container. And MLA really emphasizes understanding this point. Let's look more at this idea of containers. So here we have a book chapter. So we have Bazin Patrick. So this is last name first, first name last. Quotation marks here, what does that tell us? This is something inside something bigger. So this is a smaller part of something bigger. What is this? This looks like a chapter name. So this is the chapter. And then what is this over here? The future of the book. This is the book name. Now, who wrote the book? Well, the book is written by different people because they have different chapters. The book was put together, though, edited by someone, and that editor is here. So, comma, edited by Jeffrey Noonberg. How many editors? Just one editor. First name first, last name last. We do not reverse it. We only reverse the name at the very beginning. Who is the publisher? University of California, P. What does P mean? Press. Comma, when was the year? It was published 1996, and this chapter toward meta-reading, this chapter are these pages here, 153 to 168. Let's bring up the video example again. We've got lots of examples in this video one, getting more and more complicated, I think. So what about this situation where we have a video, I want to cite the video, but I don't want to cite the whole series. I want to cite just one episode. Well, then we have the episode number, remember? What if I want to cite one episode, but not the whole episode, just one piece of the episode? Then what do I do? Well, let's look at an example of that. So here we begin with the episode name, Hush. How do we know this is the name? Because it's quotation marks. What does quotation marks mean? This is something that's inside something bigger, inside a container. What's the container? The container is the name of the series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
Created by Joss Whedon, performance by Sarah Michelle Geller. Geller. This is season four, episode one, Mutant Enemy 1991. So in this case, I'm actually writing something about this performance from this actress in this season, in this episode, in this year. Okay, continuing on with this idea of being a smaller part of something bigger, let's look at an example of a website post that's actually one bit rather than the whole uh, blog or the whole website. So in this case, we have Omichael, Omichael, comma, Stephanie, so Stephanie's the first name, Omichael is the last name, surname, family name. We have the quotation marks here, so this tells us it's something smaller inside a bigger container. The reading brain differences between digital and print. And this is inside the website or the blog, so many books. And this was posted on 25 April 2013. So here we have the day, the month, and the year. And the address is here. So this is the web address. Again, we do not use the HTTP beginning. We just write the name out, not the protocol. So many books blog.com and here all these details at the end take you directly to that one post that's being cited. So that's an example of one post on a blog. How about things like comic books, which are kind of like magazines. So here we have the author's name, last name first, Bose, first name last, Daniel, David Boring 8 Ball. So this is in the italics, which is the same as underline, right? So this is the name of the larger thing, which is the whole name of the comic in this case. It's not a chapter, it's like the whole comic. But that comic has many uh, issues. That comic has many um, times a year it may come out, or once a year, but for many years. So in this case, you go ahead and you include the number, because most comics do have numbers. And Fanta Graphics is the publisher, and the year it came out was 1998, the one we're citing, which is number 19. So Charles et al. So this must have three or more authors. And the comic's name is She-Hawk. This is not a chapter, but a comic. But this comic is one out of many that come out. But this is number one. And the year is 2014. And the publisher is Marvel Comics. So it's kind of like your journals. Very similar to the journals, only... Um, you don't have an article and a journal because it's a comic, right? And the individual comics don't have names. So Superman is just Superman, Batman is just Batman, there's not individual ones. Although I guess there are different series, so you could be using different series names too, but then it would not be part of the Batman whole. It would just be the series name. So that's a little bit of a special case. I doubt you're going to be citing comics in your research, unless your research is about comics, which actually sounds like some interesting research to me.